What's going on, guys? Spring is here, which means one thing, winter is coming. That's right, Game of Thrones returns for season six this Sunday. But with more characters than ever spread out all around Westeros, Essos, and all the other Oses, it's hard to keep everything straight. That's why we're here once again to tell you everything you need to know on The Idiot's Guide to Game of Thrones. Oh, by the way, uh, there's gonna be some spoilers, duh. Before we begin, this episode is brought to you by Squarespace, where you can build professional looking websites regardless of your skill level. For more info, check the link in the description below. Let us begin in the only place that makes Washington DC look like a functional seat of government. King's Landing, where Papa Tywin Lannister is being given the old Game of Thrones googly eyes after Tyrion popped a few arrows in his ass. With Lannisters dropping like flies and the Dornish Prince Oberyn the Red Viper Martell's brain bits still being scraped off the tapestry, Cersei is on guard. And after getting a threatening piece of snake mail from Dorne, brother Jamie sent off on a secret mission to bring back his niece slash daughter, Myrcella. Remember that one that Tyrion had sent away back in season two? I'm going to Dorne. I'm bringing our daughter home. Who better to tag along with the one-handed sister f***er than Bronn? The sell sword with a heart of gold. In that he would sell his own heart for gold. We'll get back to their road trip in a sec, but still in King's Landing, Cersei has even more threats to deal with. And first up, Marjorie Tyrell. The haughty queen batting her eyes who's moved on from Joffrey to Tommen. The other, other Lannister incest baby? You follow, right? Finally, one of Marjorie's husbands survives both the wedding and the wedding day. Marjorie has convinced her freshly de-virginized new husband to send his tiger mom packing back to Casterly Rock. She'll never let you out of her sight. But wouldn't you be happier in Casterly Rock? Uh-uh, she's having none of it. In typical restrained fashion, she deals with her rival by creating Game of Thrones version of the Taliban, the faith militant, led by the so humble it's kind of obnoxious High Sparrow. Why no shoes? I gave them away to someone who needed them more. The faith goes all letter of the law on the Tyrells, as Cersei intended, throwing Loras Tyrell in jail for being gay and Marjorie Tyrell in jail for covering it up. But let she who is without brother and cousin Lovin cast the first stone. Remember cousin Lancel, Cersei's boy toy from season one? Well, he's been born again, and he's ready to snitch on Cersei. Now, Cersei's thrown in jail for crimes that she totally committed. I am the queen! I am the queen! Have you lost your mind? What's King Tommen gonna do about it? Uh, nothing. He's sweet but useless. The queen is in prison and there is nothing I can do! To gain her freedom, Cersei must take the longest walk of shame of all time. Literally. Shame. Shame. I got a feeling uh, that she's not gonna let that one slide. So good thing she ends the season in the arms of her brand new Franken Mountain. Red Viper bad. Meanwhile, in the north, brothel owner turned lord of a freaking kingdom, Littlefinger, that guy is scheming and conniving. He's married off Sansa Stark to the bastardiest Bolton of them all, Ramsay, otherwise known as, holy sh how'd they come up with someone worse than Joffrey? But don't worry, big old Brianna Tarth and her new bestie, Podrick still have her back, just from a very respectful distance that you practically need binoculars to see from. Seriously, they're gonna wait in that inn all season looking for a candle? I mean, you're leaving a lot to chance. Sansa's marriage to Ramsay goes even worse than expected, but at least she finds out that Theon didn't actually kill her little brothers. Tell me that they weren't your brothers! They weren't Brandon Rickoff! I couldn't find them. That's something, right? At Castle Black, with the King Beyond the Wall, Mance Raider's wildling army defeated by Stannis the Manus Baratheon. Jon Snow's moping has joined forces with Stannis' grumpiness to make the wall an even more depressing place, uh, as if that was even possible. Good thing the Red Woman, Melisandre, is there to brighten things up by burning Mance alive to her ancient fire god. As if he didn't even have enough to mope about already, Jon is voted in as the Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. Blah, responsibilities! Now he's gotta chop off the heads of his rebellious underlings, refuse offers to abandon his post from Stannis, refuse the Red Woman's fiery loins, and send his best bro Sam off to become a maester. You know nothing, Jon Snow. Heavy is the head that wears the curls. Unlike everyone else on the show, Jon is actually concerned about the army of ice zombies about to murder their way south. He is so desperate, he's willing to work with their sworn enemies, the wildlings, and he goes on a rescue mission with Tormund Giants Bane in one of the most awesome battle scenes in show history, Hard Home. 
There's giants, zombies, skeleton kids, basic mayhem. John's Valerian steel sword seems to do pretty well against the White Walkers, but unless he's got a duffel bag full of priceless weapons, it looks like the wall and everyone south of it are pretty much boned. We even see a little more of the badass Knight's King, with the beautiful blue eyes, who gives John Television's most epic come at me bro, gesture of all time. John and the Wildlings barely make it back to Castle Black with their lives intact, which is more than you can say for Stannis. You think you're having a bad day? Well, with his back against the wall, literally, and his war to conquer Westeros in dire straits, he burns his beloved daughter Shireen at the stake for good fortune. Hey, maybe next time just light a prayer candle, am I right? Then his wife hangs herself, most of his troops ride off, the Red Woman abandons him, and his attack on Winterfell goes about as well as a bug's attack on a bus windshield. Finally out of that room, Brienne deals the killing blow to the man responsible for the murder of her beloved Renly Baratheon all of those seasons ago. I won't do you, Juicy. Never one to let a good tragedy go to waste, the show has Theon and Sansa use the failed attack on Winterfell as an excuse to maybe sort of commit double suicide by jumping off the city walls. And just in case you weren't bummed enough yet, <coughs> Jon Snow is betrayed by his brothers for giving the wildlings a helping hand. <coughs> for the watch. Is he really dead? Is he coming back to life? The Red Lady is there. She does Hocus Pocus. What are you doing to me, Game of Thrones? I can't quit you. Where are Jaime and Bronn throughout all of this? They're hacking and slashing their way through Dorne, the vaguely Spanish spice to King's Landing's white bread. It's a race to rescue Jamie's daughter, Marcella, and their competition is the Sand Snakes, newly fatherless bastard daughters of Oberyn, the Red Viper Martell. The Sand Snakes and Oberyn's lover, Ilaria, want to murder Marcella in order to provoke a war with the Lannisters. Good thing for the world that Dorne is ruled by Prince Doran. He arrests all of these hotheads and lets them talk out their problems on a very special episode of Game of Thrones. I cannot disobey my king's command. She will return with you to King's Landing. And everyone lives happily ever after, right? No way. Marcella gets a poison kiss on the way out of town, dies in the arms of her father, who until recently she thought was her uncle. And with Joffrey and Marcella gone, all Jamie and Cersei have left is Tommen. Sweet, useless Tommen. It's almost like it's unlucky to have sex with your brother and pop out a bunch of illegitimate kids. Let us venture across the narrow sea to Essos. Former royal spider Varys has smuggled father murdering Tyrion Lannister east to help guide Queen Daenerys Targaryen in the finer arts of diplomacy. While Tyrion seems more interested in mastering the art of puke and rally. <laughs> But their timing is perfect, because boy does the mother of dragons have her hands full. After conquering the slave city of Marine, she's been forced to park two of her three dragons in the garage ever since they developed a taste for human flesh. Now, adhering to her personal code of you break it, you buy it, Danny's gonna rule this place no matter how boring it is for us to watch. And after making everyone in the city furious with her flip-flopping on slavery in the fighting pits, a full-scale revolt breaks out. Tyrion makes it there in time to help, but he would have showed up a lot sooner if he hadn't been kidnapped by Lord of the Friend Zone, Jor Marmont. You'd think bringing your crush, a funny dwarf, would get you back in her good graces, but no, still exiled. And he's also got a mean case of the uncurable, disfiguring disease, Grayscale, for his troubles, making him just the saddest character of all time. Just when the revolution in Marine goes fully out of control, her wild dragon Drogon makes a timely appearance and flies Daenerys as far away from Marine as we'd all like to be at this point, only to drop her back off with those Dothraki. What? Those Klingon dudes on horses from season one? We are literally back to where we started. Can we just get the mother of dragons to Westeros this century? Is that too much to ask? But Danny's not the only girl learning a thing or two in the East. There's also Arya Stark. After acing How to Kill 101, she's admitted to graduate school at the House of Black and White, a religious cult slash murder dojo that any 11 year old would be lucky to get into. She's taken under the wing of awesome faceless assassin, Jochen Hagar from season two, and everything seems to be going swimmingly until she goes rogue and murders Marin Trant, the man who killed her sword fighting teacher, Sirio Farrell, in season one. Remember, he was fighting them with a wooden sword? You can scratch one name off the list, Arya. Oh, and scratch your eyesight, too. What's happening? 
What's happening? What is with these Starks? Can they not catch a break? Beheaded, crippled, marry a psychopath, dead, blind. And finally, oh, Bran, who's so unimportant to the story right now, he was completely written out of season five, which left him somewhere in the north learning from the three-eyed raven and Inside that tree? I'm just gonna assume that Rickon, Osha, Gendry, and all the other forgotten characters from this show are up there too. See you on Sunday, Bran. So there you have it. The Tyrells are in church jail, Cersei's pissed off, Jaime and Bronn are on their way back with only one living incest child left to the Lannister name. Jon Snow is dead? The ice zombies are still coming. The Boltons hold Winterfell. Tyrion, Varys, and Lord Friendzone are ready to ride for their queen and marine. But Daenerys is back to square one, and we are out of books. The show has outrun George R. R. Martin, which admittedly is not difficult to do. But still, the night is dark and full of no more spoilers from book readers. Ha! See? Never reading a book eventually pays off. What do we leave out? Are you upset that we didn't mention Sam losing his V-card to his girlfriend Gilly? Oh my. Or the sudden disappointing and inexplicable death of Sir Barristan Selmy? Let us know in the comments below. I want to thank you for watching Screen Junkies. I'm Hal Rudnick. Hit me up on Twitter. Bye-bye. Wait, Hal, there's more. Starting next Monday, April 25th, our new Game of Thrones recap show, Watching Thrones, begins. You'll be able to break down every episode of Game of Thrones with us on Screen Junkies Plus. Spencer, me, Michelle Boyd, special guests. It's going to be fun. You don't have to wait till Monday. You can go to ScreenJunkies.com right now to see our season recaps for all five seasons of Game of Thrones. So your watch begins now. Winter is here. Sweating my balls off of this thing. Bye-bye. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. For more information, click on the link in the description. Don't forget, you can catch Watching Thrones free right now on ScreenJunkies.com with our Seasons 1 through 5 recaps. And brand new episodes recapping Season 6 begin Monday, April 25th, live on Screen Junkies Plus. We'll help you remember all the characters' names and help you remember all the characters' deaths so you can grieve all over again. Valor Margulis.